Hi everybody and welcome back to this channel where I share my top tips for researchers and PhD students how to regularly write research papers for top journals in the field. And in this video I want to talk about one of my um, top books, one of my favorite books when it comes to like productivity and you know and just being effective, right? And it's called Deep Work by Carl Newport. And this book really shows you the rules for focused work in a deeply distracted world. So I think nowadays we live in a world that's just so full of distractions that it's a really rare thing to be able to focus on something at length. And you know, research clearly shows that it's really focused and deep work that makes us more productive, makes us happier, and makes us more satisfied. So if this is something that you want to achieve, then stick around and let's talk a little bit more about Carl Newport's deep work and how it can help you write more research papers. So before we dive in and talk a little bit more about the rules for focused work, work in, you know, in a deeply distracted world, um, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button uh, so you don't miss future videos. And if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run this channel and Academic English Now where I help researchers and PhD students write more research papers. So why is Deep Work by Carl Newport one of my favorite books? Well, it's completely changed how I view productivity and how I view work. In the past, you know, I used to think that kind of the more I do, the busier I am, the better, right? And maybe that's kind of what you've been told as well, that like you've got so many things going on and in order to be more productive, you need to spend more time and do more work and do an ever increasing number of tasks, right? But the truth is that that's just a shortcut to burnout and shortcut to being distracted, unhappy and unproductive. And the real deal is being able to focus deeply on one meaningful thing, right? If you're having problems with focusing, I also have another video where I discuss it in more depth. But let's talk about Carl Newport's um, deep work. So he divides the book into three distinct parts, uh, two distinct parts, sorry. So there is the idea of deep work and then the rules for deep work. And if you think about it, it's kind of simple. I mean, why first of all, do you want to engage in deep work? Well, first of all, you know, as Carl Newport says in his first chapter, deep work is valuable, right? It's, it's something that will help you to produce amazing results, right? And as a result, just be more successful in life. If you think about any big project that you have to complete, you can't complete it in between scrolling Facebook and checking your email. You really have to focus on it at length for you know a very long period of time right so that's why deep work is valuable you know it's also rare why is it rare because you know our world is increasingly distracted well i mean you're on youtube yourself and maybe you should be actually writing your papers and not watching me talk about carl newport's deep work so really you know being able to achieve this state of flow and deep work and focus is a rarity these days. And I think, you know, if there's one thing that kind of has helped me to succeed is the ability to do deep work. You know, I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm, you know, I'm an expert at it, far from it, but I'm probably better at it than an average researcher. And this allows me to be, you know, very productive and have a really good work-life balance, don't work at the weekends, don't work in the evenings, yet produce valuable work that my research community values and appreciates, right? And the third reason that Carl Newport talks about in, in the third chapter of his book is that deep work is meaningful. Now, you know, I don't know if you found it as well, but for me, really, like the happiest and the most satisfied that I've been with, you know, with my work um, 
is when I've engaged in deep work, when I've been deeply focused on something, you know, and you get into that state of flow, you get into the zone, as some people call it, right? And then just things, things just flow and time passes like this, you know, and you're engaged in, in work. And, you know, when you finish it, you're like, wow, this was, this was really good. Like I've done something really nice here. That's when I felt you know, sort of the most meaning to my work. On the other hand, like, you know, when you've got a day when you're like constantly like in between meetings, answering emails and stuff like this, and you're never able to sit down for like two hours to do something deeply meaningful. I personally don't like days like that. They just feel frustrating. It feels like I'm not really doing anything meaningful, right? In, in any sort of way. So that's the third reason why you want to be engaging in deep work. Meaning, giving meaning to your life and as a result, you know, feeling more satisfied, happier, more fulfilled. Now, what are the rules for deep work? Well, Carl Newport shares four rules for working um, deeply, right? And, you know, the, the, the first one is to, is to find, to design your environment so that it's conducive to, to deep work because if you're constantly surrounded by distractions, you know, you've got a very cluttered environment, you know, you're constantly bombarded by notifications from email and Facebook and maybe YouTube, then it will be impossible to do deep work no matter how hard you try. That's why, for example, in another video, I've showed you my own desk setup and how uncluttered it is. And you should aim for a very uncluttered environment and you should find space where you're able to focus deeply, right? And, you know, you can also use help to focus deeply, such as, for example, binaural beats, right? Which is kind of music that really helps and research has shown helps to focus, right? So, so that's, that's kind of the first rule of, of deep work. Now, the second one, which is very interesting, I think, is to embrace boredom, right? What, what does Carl Newport mean by that? Well, you know, if you, if you think back to those times, if you're old enough to remember them, when there were no mobile phones, you know, and you were standing in the queue, for example, you know, at the shop, well, what did you used to do? Well, you just used to get bored, I suppose. You used to think, your mind would wander. Maybe you would chat to some people who were also standing in the queue. Well, what do people do now? Well, people just pick up the mobile phone. Like people these days, they don't know how to be bored. They, they find boredom uncomfortable, right? They constantly have to be doing stuff, right? Which means that they're constantly distracted, which means that then when they have to do just one thing, for a very long time, they, they can't do it because their mind wants to do other stuff, right? The mind feels, you know, bored, uncomfortable. So you need to get comfortable with boredom. And the next time, you know, for example, you're standing in the queue and you want to pick up your phone, don't do it. Just try to let your mind wander and, and be, you know, and get comfortable with being bored because often when you're bored, that's when, you know, the best ideas will, will come to your mind as well. And the third rule that, that he's got is, is perhaps quite extreme for, um, for a lot of people is to just quit social media, right? And why does he recommend it? Well, because for most of us, social media are the biggest distraction there is, right? I don't know how long you've been on YouTube now watching this video, but very often, like, you know, you start watching one video and then another pops up and then another one, another one, and then by the time you know it, you've spent like an hour on, on YouTube and you don't even know why you've been here such a long time. And the same thing happens with other stuff like Instagram, Facebook and all the other social media, right? So of course we can fight it with our own willpower, but it's extremely difficult, right? A, a much better solution is just to get rid of it, right? If you can't bring yourself to get rid of it or you need it for work, like I kind of need YouTube um, for work, then, you know, try to minimize it, right? And try to schedule blocks of time when you will allow yourself to use it. Uh, delete it from your phone, right? So you can't look at Facebook on your phone, right? Try to put kind of barriers in between yourself and the thing that distracts you. 
And the last rule that Carl Newport shares here is called the drain the shallows, right? So he, you know, kind of compares shallow work with deep work, right? So shallow work is this work that actually a lot of us are engaged in most of the time through our working day. It's like answering emails, you know, it's like going to meetings, it's, you know, it's all that stuff that's just very shallow on the surface, right? It might be necessary to like to keep your institution going or something like this, but it, it steals the time from deep, meaningful work. So in order to be more productive and at the same time have a really good working work-life balance, what you want to do is drain the shallows, meaning you want to get rid of or reduce, eliminate shallow work, right? Or put it in, you know, in pockets of time where you're going to do it. But everything else, as much as possible, should be devoted to deep work, right? And I've got another video when I talk about my top ma time management tips for researchers, which you might want to check out. But, you know, if you think about it, right, I mean, you are in the position you are in, whether you're a researcher or a PhD student, because you're supposed to produce knowledge and write research papers. I mean, nobody hired you to take part in endless meetings or answer emails, right? That's shallow work, right? Um, you shouldn't be doing that, you know, a lot, right? You should be writing research papers. That's essentially what you're there for, right? So what we need to do is just spend as little time as possible doing shallow work and spend as much time as possible doing deep work. And the reason for that as well is that, you know, there's this thing called Parkinson's law. And basically it says that, you know, the, the amount of work that we have to do um, expands to fit the time that we allocate to it. In other words, if you allocate three hours to do to answer your emails, you'll spend three hours answering your emails. But if you allocate just half an hour to it, you will just spend half an hour doing it and you will probably finish it as well, right? So drain the shallows. So if you're a researcher or a PhD student who's, you know, who wants to be more productive, but at the same time be more successful, happier, more feel more fulfilled, then I'd really recommend Deep Work by Carl Newport. And if you want more personalized tips and you want to work with me um, individually, then book a free one-to-one -one consultation. The link is somewhere below this video. And we're going to analyze the challenges that you're currently facing, pinpoint your exact goals, and then outline a personalized strategy that will help you to achieve those goals faster. And the link to book that free consultation is somewhere below this video.